Hey, what's going on? I'm DJ Six Smith. You're watching the sit down. We're gonna have a good time. I'm gonna hang out with Josh Pace here. What's going on, man? Wait, it's Pice. Oh, oh my gosh, I'm sorry. Pice. I already screwed it up. No, man, let's just go with it. <laughs> no, 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 this is no, this is good because you do the that and then the correction. <laughs> no, this is in. You want to just leave? This is in. We're, right, leaving we're leaving it. it. We're leaving, leaving it. it. Josh Pice. Come on. All right, here we go. How are you, man? Good, man. <laughs> now that I got you down, how's yeah. everything going? Everything's good. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, you got a lot of stuff going on right now. You got the Joker movie, Motherless Brooklyn. This is a good time for you, it seems like. It is, yeah. Ray Donovan. Ray Donovan, Mrs. Course. Fletcher. There you are. Oh. There's the guy. That is my guy with the beautiful dyed, <laughs> almost orange hair. This is quite a look right here that you got going. Yeah. Yeah, We with the uh, costume designer, we. The, the design for this guy is like he goes to a store and and asks for whatever's the most expensive shirt. <laughs> like it doesn't matter doesn't what. Doesn't matter if it looks good yeah, or anything. Yeah, it's like if it's eight hundred dollars, like uh, I'll take it. <laughs> You're like yes, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> so how much influence did you have in creating that whole look? Um, well, as soon as the costume designer said that, I was like. Absolutely. You're like, let's roll with it. Yeah. And the shoes, like 800 I never had $800 <laughs> shoes, and they were sneakers. Wow. So. It's like a whole different Yeah, and it just kind of transports you, you know, into a slightly, you know, douche mode. <laughs> yeah, I guess when you're spending $800, like, douche mode is just automatic. Yeah, like, it's A given. couple hundred bucks for sneakers, you're automatically in that category. Yeah, no, 800 800 is yeah, right there. Yeah, Then you're just like. <laughs> like, this is me. Yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about Ray Donovan for a second. Okay. You've obviously had a good run on this show. Yeah. When do you feel like this turned into a bigger thing? Because sustainability in TV is tough, and this show has really cut through. Yeah. So how do you think that happened? Uh, I think it's just the each season there's an evolution of all the characters and the characters' stories, and it's amazing. I mean, it's happening in sev all the shows that are lasting. It's the writers are able to reimagine the world and that's what keeps people engaged how about Liev Schreiber what have you learned from working with this guy he's well we've known each other for we we were in scream 3 together oh yeah that's right and so uh, that's how we met and um, he's uh, like underneath everything he's like a real sweetheart mm. teddy bear um, but he's you know he brings it. Like, look at this dude. Oh, man, he's got yeah. to go. You would never know this guy's a teddy bear right No. <laughs> I mean, he's not only a teddy bear, right. but that's, like, underneath there. Um, yeah, and, yeah. yeah, I mean, it was, you know, I play a guy who has all the amenities, has the money, has everything, and is empty inside. Mm. And so it leads him to Whole lot wanting to, yeah. you know, sleeping with porn stars mm -hmm. and just be a, doing desperate stuff in, in a sense to feel alive mm -hmm. or feel like he has some purpose you know it's like it's the classic story of somebody getting all the Having accoutrements yeah. of success and then it doesn't change anything mm. and they're miserable. Mm. And, and it's always interesting like what people are actually striving for in life. They think mm -hmm. that's going to solve everything. Absolutely. But they're still empty. Yeah. But so it's great. Anyway. I mean, it just allows for a character that really has no boundaries. Yeah. Like he'll just do whatever, <laughs> and and it usually leads to uh, some interesting situations. Yeah, right? to him getting punched, beaten up, <laughs> broken arm. Yeah. Um, you know. And I'm sure it's interesting for you. Like you do Scream Three, you never have any idea that you'll wind up in a show like this all these years later. And you've done so many different things. I'm sure it's interesting for you to kind of put all the pieces together with your career and everything. Yeah. It's a cool yeah. thing. Yeah. How have you had this consistency for so many years? Because you've done all these different projects. How do you go about choosing different things to do? Um, I just choose what what I get. Mm. <laughs> keep it simple. Yeah, like, I keep right, it simple. This is a cool thing. Yeah, Here, okay. Jump in. Yeah. Um, I mean, I just bring as much truth to what I do as possible and um, you know, in characters like this and, and many others, you know, I, um, I love to transform, um, kind of shifting the energetic patterns in my body, mm. which, which, which shifts into different forms of behavior. And, um, 
and uh, yeah, and people just, you know, oh, he can do this, he can do that. It's like the, the guy that can that can do it. Yeah, you're the guy that can kind of do a little bit of everything. Yeah. So it's like you know, Joker movies coming up. Yeah. Todd Phillips is like, all right, we need a guy. Yeah. Let's give Josh a call. So how yeah. did that all go down? That I mean, I heard about that project, and I just as soon as I heard Joaquin Phoenix and the Joker, I'm not. I mean, if it was, well, I'm not going to. I'm not going to say anything about uh, um, su big superhero right, movies. Right. But when I heard that, I'm not going to pull a score. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Okay, take two. Take no, two. No, 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 no. We're keeping we're everything keep in. Rolling. Everything's keep in. Keep it rolling. Keep it rolling. Yep, keep it rolling. Rule. Um, but I heard Joaquin Phoenix. I heard Joker, mm -hmm. and I heard it was going to be filmed like an independent movie, um, which it was. And I just really wanted to be with it, be in it. Yeah. And I met with Todd, and um, we hit it off, and um, you know, and I and was so thrilled and you know being on set there was just a a vibe like everybody even though it wasn't fully spoken everybody knew that Joaquin was going to take it there mm. he was going to bring his game on like full on and it just there was so much concentration when we were filming that everybody just brought their best game and and because everybody knew that Joaquin was digging deep it just the set was so focused because usually you know you sh do a take and then <laughs> there's like this weird amount of time right, sometimes it can out. and yeah. it's like wait wh what are we doing <laughs> like what's and are we, then, are we like a movie wait here? what you right. know it's like wait are, are we waiting for anything <laughs> um, and there was very little of the, it was like we were shooting the, the crew was silent you know mm. usually like everybody starts talking yeah. sandwiches you know so and everybody's extremely it, it was just like focused and um, and it really it's it's an extraordinary movie. Mm. It's gotten a lot of, it got a lot of interesting um, chit chat mm. about it before it opened, before people even saw it. But what's amazing, what I love about the movie is that ultimately it's a cautionary tale right. about how we have to take care of everybody in our culture. And if, and if we don't, um, there's you know there's a price to pay yeah, for all of us yeah, yeah. and well, of course it's dramatized and sure. but it's very it's very rooted in in a reality and it's also 80s new york like mm. it's dirty yeah. and it's like the new york Grainy. the new york that i grew up in yeah. you know and I miss the dirt mm. sometimes. <laughs> Some other parts, like the old Times Square, you're just like, probably better that it's not like I kind of like the yeah, old Times Square, yeah. <laughs> well, it's cool that we can have movies and TV shows, even like the deuce that goes back into like the 70s, yeah. 80s, you know? It's cool to be nostalgic about those times. Yeah, totally. So what surprised you the most about what was being written about Joker? Um, just that it was a movie that was going to get uh, that was um, kind of glorifying violence, mm -hmm. and I don't think you know it. I don't think it does that. Um, I think it's about a guy, a, a very simple guy, um, you know, that lives with his mom. You know, these are not spoiler alerts. Um, no, you can see that in the trailer. Okay, yeah. you can see it in the trailer. Yeah. I don't want to. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> but you know, it's like yeah, a yeah. it's like a sweet guy that's trying to right. do his best. He has some some problems, and um, he's on certain medications and getting certain support from you know the city, and that gets taken away, and it's you know, and life happens to him, and this is the direction um, that that he goes. So what are your scenes looking like when people check out the movie? Um, well, I guess I can say a little bit more than sure. I ha have in the past, yeah, yeah. but I'm basically his boss. Gotcha. Yeah, at a kind of a very low rent mm. talent agency. <laughs> so you had some really interesting moments, I'm sure, on set working with jo Joaquin then. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, um, it, you know, when we're working together, it's, it's just, He's just there. He's just 
that just guy. He's in. that guy. He's yeah. locked in. Um, there was no like chit chat. It was just like, okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> this dude's here. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm my, my I'm dude. My dude. Yeah. You know, let's see what happens. And I'm sure for you, like you've worked with so many different people. Like just seeing him in this role, like you've worked with very talented people, but like. Joaquin as the Joker, like, was that a different level in terms of just what you had interacted with on sets before? It was different in that he was, I don't know if, you know, he would say he was a method actor, mm -hmm. but he transformed his body and his physical choices seemed to fully, um, it was a fully, he was fully integrated in, in, in the work. Mm. And sometimes, uh, not everybody, not every character that people are working on requires that. Um, but so that was, uh, I'd never worked with someone that had gone mm. that deep in. Like a you. lot of times it'll be almost like we'll be chit chatting and then it's action and then it just kind of evolves th whatever this relationship is right into the scene. Mm. Um, and this was, um, I was going in it, you know, I was really creating my dude, he right. was creating his dude, and then we just see, you know. And blended burr, 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 it together. Yeah. Well, yeah, or sparks or mm. whatever, yeah. So how about Todd Phillips? What did you enjoy the most in terms of that experience? Um, so focused, so clear, so um, playful. Um, and a, just a combination of playful collaboration and really intense. Mm. I like it. Yeah. That's a cool combination. Yeah. So do you think this is going to be the biggest box office smash, or smash you've been a part of? Um, I mean, you got a lot yeah, of movies on there. Yeah. Th I mean. Already number one with this. It's thing. number one yeah. in the world. <laughs> yeah, which is pretty <laughs> insane when you think about yeah. it, right? I don't know if I've ever been in a movie that was number one mm. in the world. Right. So. Yeah, I mean that's a big deal. It's one yeah. thing to be number one domestically, but. Yeah. Th this is one of those movies that like it's not just the thing here in this yeah. country. Like it's really. Yeah, it's a phenomenon. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So let's talk about Motherless Brooklyn because okay. I check out the trailer this morning and I'm like, oh my gosh, this cast is absolutely loaded. Another yeah. New York story. So yeah. How did yeah. you jump Edward, in on this? Edward, Edward Norton, Norton, Bruce Willis, Al Willem Dafoe, Alec Baldwin. Like yeah. this is a stacked lineup. Yeah. So how'd you jump into this one? This um, Edward Norton, you know, called me. We we've done a, uh, this is the third project we've done together, and he told me about this, and I was like, you know, I was like, okay, yes. you yeah. know, let's run. Um, and it's uh, it's a you know it's a 1950s thriller. Um, it has a lot of politics. It it has it mirrors what's happening politically mm -hmm. to a certain extent uh, today, and it's it's a really it's it's an epic. It's a really big movie, even though there's no superheroes. It feels like it's that size of a movie, okay. which I, and I don't quite know why it it has that. Mm. But yeah, I've worked with Bruce. I worked with all those guys in in this, you know, and just working with Bruce Willis was, yeah. was oh a gosh. trip. I mean, come on. And well, you know, Willem, Willem Dafoe. Dafoe. I mean, come on. I mean, these are artists that are some of the best at their craft. Yeah. You know. And and just, you know, people that <laughs> was like, yeah. I love seeing these guys totally. in the movies. You know. Like, and do you take a minute to just be like, this is pretty sick. Like, this is pretty. Yeah. Cool. Uh, you yeah. got it, right? And then and then you and then you're back. And then it. you got to yeah, and then you just got to step in and like see the being mm. that's actually there. Uh, otherwise, you know, it can't be in your head. Definitely. And uh, yeah. So what did you learn from that experience? Oh, what did I learn? That's a good question. Um, what did I learn? I mean, I'll, what I learned, one thing I learned working with Alec Baldwin mm -hmm. was, um, you know, he's got a level of intensity to him, <laughs> to yeah, say the least. No question. And um, and I had to, almost off camera, like that we had a little kind of, uh, uh, there was a little kind of banter back and forth, and I had to kind of rise up mm. to match his energy. And as soon as I did that. Um, 
you know, he was like, hey, let me show you pictures of my family, <laughs> you know. So you met him in his life. I had, and then he I, you I didn't know it was going to go that yeah. way, but it was like, there was just like, <laughs> and it was like, okay. All right, we're you know, in. and I was like, no, yeah, this is how we're going to do the scene. <laughs> You know, but that must and, be interesting and then to carry that over off off yeah, camera. Yeah, and like we that. kind of you know brought that right into mm. in into the scene uh, that we were shooting really on, on that particular day. And so, you know, and I work with him, somewhat for him, mm. somewhat against him, mm. um, and so it was just to raise up. Got to ramp up a little bit. Yeah, for that particular, um, for that particular. Um, scene we were shooting, but I play a guy that is, it's, he almost, well he does, like he wants to be invisible, mm. um, and it's almost like his energy is, he, he's involved in everything, but he's, doesn't, but it's all like he's doing it behind the scenes, so it's an interesting thing, just playing with like sending energy out, but trying to be invisible, mm. and he's really, Screwing up, <laughs> the screwing pooch. up some things. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. So you're a New York guy. Like this is a New York movie. We've seen yeah. like big time New York movies, mob movies. Why right. do you think that hits home with a lot of people? Why do you think those types of movies really resonate so deeply with people? That's a, another great question. I think there's something about New York, and there's something um, about you know. Thrillers, I think, at least for men, mm -hmm. it's like it makes you feel like yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just rile something up. Yeah, it does, and and just to see New York and the you know, New York is just it's I, different. It's yeah. di it's different, and it's got an edge, and it's and it's romantic, and it's sexy, and mm -hmm. it's messed up. Um, I'd like to know. I I don't know. Uh, you think thrillers are do you think women? Do you think women like thrillers yeah, as much? I think what do you so. think? I think, I think sometimes, so. Sometimes, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because you think about like. But all I, the... I wonder. Like, I, I think it's. I know for me, yeah. like, it's somehow seeing a movie like that. Like, I feel like yeah. There's some intensity to yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, I think for women too, it can certainly yeah. rile things up, and also just like for for men and women, like the fear factor in all of it, because like yeah. people are dying, you don't know what's going to happen next. Yeah. It's happening right down the block from where you live, you know. Yeah. So it kind of hits on all the different emotions. I feel yeah. Like. And there's just. I don't know. Criminality yeah. in gritty New York is it it's delicious. It, it it's like is. a spicy pasta. <laughs> You're like, I want some more of this. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, I'm running through your IMDb, and speaking about this, like, The Bronx is Burning kind of combines all of this stuff. It does, yeah. And for you, growing up in New York, I'm sure that was pretty fascinating. So what do you remember about that project? Uh, I mean, that would... That was great. I was working with John Turturro, yeah. and it was, yeah, very gritty New York, um, very, you know, I played, uh, what's his name? Phil Pepe. Pe Phil yeah. Pepe, yeah. 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 And just to be like, you know, a real uh, uh, <laughs> it's, it's getting uh, New yet. Yorker, <laughs> you know, super fun. Yeah. And I grew up in Alphabet City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I grew up on 7th Street between C and D. Right, so you so right, right it was like, that, that was just raw. Mm. Uh, like, so it was, uh, when I was growing up, it was all heroin mm. and acid. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, and as a kid, and I would just, you know, see craziness, literally seeing people jump out of a abandoned building oh, on gosh. acid thinking they could fly and, <laughs> and oh, coming out on the stoop and, people were OD'd mm. and it was just normal that you would just like hoist them up. Right. I remember like nine, 10 years old and you would just walk them up and down the street and keep them awake so they would, because if they fall asleep, yeah. they're, they're, they're out for good. And that it was just normal. It wasn't like, uh, it wasn't, wasn't like, it wasn't here. like you were doing any, like doing a good deed. Yeah. It was just like, oh, okay. Oh yeah, it's it's a Friday night and I gotta pick right. up my friend yeah. and take him out. Yeah, or yeah, Tuesday morning. Tuesday, yeah. yeah, totally. Yeah. It, I think it's amazing how much the city has been cleaned up since then. Yeah. And, and now it makes sense to me why you miss that time because that was your childhood. It was you know, my, what, yeah, it was my childhood and it was, it, it was, there was also an incredible sense of community mm -hmm. if you were part of it coming 
into Alphabet City from another, you know, if you weren't part of it, you were putting your life in your hands, but there was like a real sense of community and there was also a lot of creativity mm -hmm. and, and it was just raw and rich. Yeah. And now it feels like New York definitely is safer, which is great, but it also feels like it's these individuals, right. you know, kind of in, in their community. own yeah. thing, you mm -hmm. know, all. Uh, and so sometimes I do miss that, <laughs> just the connectivity. Yeah, no, I totally get that. Yeah. Let's run through a few others. You were Come in, on! Let's do it. You were in Rounders. Which I is, was in Rounders. Which has some staying power as well. Yep, that's the first time I worked with uh, Edward Norton. That's yeah. right, yeah. Yep. So what sticks out in your memory all these years later about that? Uh, having uh, lunch on set with Matt Damon and Edward Norton. Oof. Just sitting there and just being like, what? <laughs> like, is this really <laughs> happening right now? Yeah. Um, well, especially for Damon at that time, too. You know, he was yeah. at the top of the charts with what he was doing. And yeah. that was just and a And just great to movie. hear them, you know, talk, just, just bantering. Ba yeah. yeah, bantering and talking about how, I remember they were talking about how the difference when a movie comes out as opposed to when it, I don't know if it was VHS time or mm. DVD, but as opposed to when it comes out on DVD and right. the thin, they were talking about, you know, Matt Damon was saying like, yeah, when it c comes out on DVD, like then there's this whole other level of being recognized. Right, it's like that second bump that you get. Yeah. Which is funny to think that like that's not even a thing anymore. Right. You know? Right. Would you like in talking about that, you're like, oh, I wonder if we're going to get this bump and now it's just like, I hope people go to the movies, I hope people stream it, you know, right. hopefully it gets on Netflix or yeah. Hulu or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Totally different game. Totally. Yeah? Yeah. So that's pretty wild. And now Coppelman and Levine doing Billions as well. I mean, right. got some good stuff going with yeah, that. Yeah. Totally. I'm a big fan of Billions, so. Yeah. Anything that they do, I'm here for. Yeah, they're awesome. Yeah, no question. How about A Beautiful Mind? What do you remember about that? I remember, uh, I, you know, again, like working with, you know, a superstar. Another huge guy, Russell yeah. Crowe. Yeah, and people, um, I remember getting there on set, you know, being in, in my trailer and like, I don't know who it was, came over, like somebody was sent over to talk to me and just said, you know, just, it's like, just, just chill. prepare yourself. Yeah. Like it, it could be, you know, he can be really intense or whatever. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and then, and then <laughs> I was just like. <laughs> <laughs> what am I supposed to do with that now? Okay. Yeah, and you know, got there and was just so chill mm -hmm. and not anything, um, you know, at all to, you know, what it wasn't. An, it, it was great. Yeah. It, it was great. And my dad was a theoretical physicist. Oh, okay. So that, that my dad worked you. with Einstein. Oh my gosh, seriously? Yeah, seriously. Wow, where was yeah. that? At the Institute for Advanced Studies wow. in Princeton, New Jersey. <laughs> what, what year was that? For eleven that? years. I guess my. I guess it was probably nine. Probably the nine, early. Probably around nineteen. Late 1940s. Okay. Yeah, because it wow. was 11 years. Yeah, something like that. I don't know when he he died, but my dad was with him. It's a long time. Before, um, like, r a couple days before he died. Oh my gosh. Yeah, my dad. That's a nice little story. Like, yeah. he, my dad went to visit him, and he Einstein was in bed, and he was kind of scribbling away, and and looked up and saw my dad, and they kind of talked, you know, just chit chat for a minute. And then my dad walked to the door and, and looked back and was going to say something, but Einstein was just back kind of wow. at it, you know. Even that, in the last days of his life. Yeah. And that for my dad was like huge. Just telling it. It's oh like, my gosh, that's I feel such a goosebump. thrill. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just to spend time with a guy like that, but to tell that intimate story that nobody yeah. else in the world can tell that story, right? right? And then passes down. Nobody's to told that story on your show. There we go. I've Ever. Never, never had an Einstein story, I can right. tell you that. Now, Josh, you got me. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> so it was, yeah, so doing... Right, so doing Beautiful Mind, the Princeton it was Connection, like, your yeah, dad. It was, yeah, and I felt like I was playing a version of my mm. dad in that, yeah. I'm sure when your dad checked it out, he must have been pretty pumped. Yeah, right? and my dad knew... Nash. Oh, he did? Yeah, from Princeton. Wow. Yeah. So what did he remember about the real Nash? Um, I mean, they were in different, different areas of, right. um, of physics, um, but just that he was quiet, mm. uh, you know, a little odd. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I think that certainly comes across when you yeah. watch the movie as well. Yeah. <laughs> 
So I've mentioned a bunch of things that you've done. What are some other projects that you have really loved that, that you've done in your career? I mean, the Ninja Turtles obviously is a huge one for you that I'm sure you've talked about at length, but like, what are some right. of the other ones that still pop to mind all these years later? Um, well, I mean, I, I know this is coming up, but Mrs. Fletcher, mm -hmm. um, which is uh, coming out on HBO, um, that you know, just uh, working with Katherine Hahn yeah. was just awesome. She's like, great. She, right? She's so great, and so just I love anybody that can um, that actors that can kind of do the dance. Mm. And what know? is the dance? How the would you dance describe is that? the dance is. Uh, you know, I think there's a part of acting is is stepping into the unknown mm -hmm. and that's scary for most people yeah, because totally. we w and and we think like if I'm going to go into the unknown I want to have I want to be really prepared but t sometimes that preparation can lock you and you're not as open to what the dance actually is mm -hmm. and somebody like Catherine is just you step in and you just pl play you're just playing you're yeah. just you're, you're just playing and and creating it as you're shooting it. Mm. And to me that's where you know that's the that's joy the best, right? that's the joy of the art form. Yeah. So anybody and I've had you know the pleasure of for most most of the time um, and I've had the opportunity to work with a really high caliber of actors. I would say the vast majority of the time that's the most successful actors work that way, mm. and and the less successful actors want they're working out of a more stationary uh, mold, and they're like they want to hold on to something and do their thing, right. um, as opposed to being open to what's actually happening. And I think people want to see. Really, what's actually happening, as yeah. opposed to somebody's preset. Yeah, you don't want to be you don't want to be too tight holding on to it. Yeah, you know, like that. Yeah. you know, you gotta have to loosen up a little bit and just yeah. be like, all right, if this is gonna happen, let me just adjust to it. Yeah, right. Yeah, I think that's a good thing. Yeah, who, who are some people that have helped you along the way? Because that's a great lesson. You know, um, who are some people that have helped you at? I mean, I worked with Meryl Streep. Oh man, when was uh, that? I did a movie movie called uh, Music of the Heart. Okay, yeah, yeah. And you know, and she was just so. Playful. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember. You haven't heard this story. All right, let's I remember, hear it. Hit me with it. You know, so you, you, we're shooting. Mm -hmm. You know, you shoot. Let's say the camera's shooting Meryl's side. I'm off camera, and then camera's on me. And so, like in this scene, like I kind of turn around to face her, and she had put tape <laughs> on her nose up to her forehead. <laughs> uh, you, you know what that look yeah, is, right? Yeah, of course. And uh, so, you know, just, not it was, your, it was not awesome. It was awesome. <laughs> it was like, okay, I'm in it. I'm, all right, okay, like, this is all right. Meryl Streep is doing this to yeah, me right now. Yeah, um, but just her generosity mm. and, and, um, and playfulness and letting it be different every take. Um, you know that was amazing. I I did a um, early on in my career. I was on this uh, Broadway play called "I'm Not Rappaport" mm, right. um, with Judd Hirsch and Cleavon Little, mm. and uh, and did that. It won the Tony Award, and I did 750 performances wow. of that. And that was amazing training because every night that I came on stage, those guys were different. Mm. And it just taught me, uh, I know my first couple times doing the show, like I was, like a, I was just talking about, like I was really locked in. Right, I'm going to really do tight. it. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to do it. And they just kind of would s sway me this mm -hmm. way and that way. And, and, and that was just an incredible learning lesson to, to let go and just, just up, to, yeah. yeah. What show do you feel like you finally felt comfortable? Like how many shows did it take before you were like, all right, I'm loose, I'm feeling good now? Um, maybe after about a month, really, like then I felt like- Then you can move Then it, I yeah. can just, just, yeah, let it unfold. Mm. That's awesome. Yeah. So when's Mrs. Fletcher coming out? Uh, October 
from late October. Late October. Late October 22nd? Yeah, I don't 7th, know. 7th, October what, 27th. Do you know when? October 27th. 27th. October 27th. And yeah. then November 1st, Motherless Brooklyn. Motherless Brooklyn, okay. yeah. Cool. Yeah. Good deal. And Ray Donovan also. And Ray Donovan coming back. Yeah, coming That's back. Right. Season seven. Is this the last seven. season? Yeah. Well, I don't know. No, I, don't, I think it's the second to last. Second to last season. Getting ready to shoot Getting a, ready to a full nude scene. A full nude scene? Full nude scene. Have you done walking. a nude scene before? In that show, I did. Okay. I had sex with a porn star. <laughs> okay, so um, <laughs> check that but one. But <laughs> this one, full, full nude, I'll just say full nude. Full nude. Walking through uh, the Plaza Hotel oh, after man. having taken two Viagra. <laughs> So. <laughs> <laughs> that is all you need to check out this show. Josh, it's been a pleasure, man. Is that a, that's that, a good note to end this on. This is perfect. Okay. Perfect note to end on. All right. That's Josh. I'm DJ. We'll see you next time here on The Sit Down. Okay.